Hey guys, welcome back to another exciting tutorial on my channel. So in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to default your date slicer to a particular date, let's say to today or to last week or last month, etc. And then also give that custom option for the users to be able to select their custom dates. For example, when I click on default over here, I want to see the last sales that have happened in the last seven days that is what is being displayed over here right now as you can see the sales value is 21,000 for the default selection which is uh, 31st of August to 5th of September all right now when I click on custom over here the user gets an option to choose any date that you that they want to look at for example let's say they want to look at the sales for the month of february and i can just go over here and give the users the option to choose the february month and be able to see the sales for that particular month and then there's also a little button here to clear the filter and get back to the default as well so this is what we will be learning today so let's get started with this tutorial i'm going to go to the modeling tab and click on new table so we will be adding a new table let's call this table as dates underscore filter is equals to i am going to use the union function over here and then add columns so uh, in the add column section let me just take this to the next line and add columns we're going to use the function called as dates between and over here i'm going to enter the date that i have in my sales table over here which is order date comma and then i'm it means it's asking me to enter the uh, start date start date is going to be uh, from today so let's say if i want uh, seven days from today so i'm going to say today minus seven comma and then my end date is going to be today of course right so that's what we are uh, working towards. Now, if you want for the last 30 days, you can simply change this to 30 and it will be calculated from last 30 days to till today, right? If, but if you want, let's say only from uh, last two weeks to last week, then we will have to change this measure here as well, okay? So once we change that, then we will get the end date where it needs to particularly end. And now we have this from today minus seven that is from last seven days up till today okay that is what we are working on and then i'm going to close the bracket over here comma and then it's asking me to enter a name so this is going to be our column name so i'm going to call this column name as uh, uh, let's say type okay comma what is the value that we have in this particular column in, in this case it's going to be default over here so I'm going to open quotes and then type in default. Close the quotes and let me just get rid of this D. Okay, so we've now completed one section and then I'm going to type in comma and then, uh, sorry, I need to close the bracket here for the add columns and then comma. Let me take this to the next line and then add another column over here and then let's type in calendar over here. So within the calendar, it's asking us to enter the start date and the end date. So start date is going to be the minimum of my order date, which means the earliest date that we have in the, in the order date start from that particular date. Okay, I'm going to close the bracket here, comma, and then the end date, which is nothing but the latest date that we have in our table. Okay, and then I'm going to end. So I'm going to type in max of my order date. Okay. Close the bracket over here. Okay, close the bracket again here for calendar and then type in comma and then it's asking us to enter the uh, column name here which is type again comma and over here instead of default this is going to be custom. Okay, and then I'm going to close the bracket once, close the bracket twice to close the bracket on the union and then press enter. Now you will see that we have created a new table called as dates filter with all the dates that I have in my calendar table okay and then there is another uh, column over here which is added saying whether it's custom or default okay let's go back to the modeling tab and uh, join these two tables over here I'm going to join the order date here with this particular order date it's going to throw show us get this dialog box over here which is creating a many to many relationship this is okay for this Okay, for this scenario and then I'm going to click on OK and then let's go back to our report over here and let's bring in um, 
city and uh, sales amount uh, city and sales okay and let's add in a table over here and let me quickly sort this by yeah so let's have this for now and then now let's create a slicer one slicer is going to be for the type that we have whether it is a default or it is a custom okay so over here we need to make sure that it is only single select right you cannot select multiple options over here so it has to be single select so as you can see over here it's already changing right when i select default the sales amount is 21000 and when i select custom it is 383194 now what are the dates that we are working on let's quickly select check that as well so if i bring in the order date over here and if I select default, it is now, so today is 6th of September. It is now bringing in only the last seven days. I don't have the data for uh, today. So it's only displaying the last six days, but it is going back all the way to 31st of August. And you can adjust this based on the values that we entered over here, minus seven. So you can change this to, uh, if I add eight over here and press enter, I'm gonna get 29th as well. So you can adjust this to whatever uh, date that you want over here for the data to appear. And it is now showing us the sales amount for these particular dates over here, which is 21,000, okay? So we've now got that particular confirmation. I'm gonna get rid of this. And now it is, so this is going to be a list. And uh, now let's add another slicer over here and bring in the order date from the dates filter table that we have created okay so this is going to be our slicer table i'm going to go here into the format visuals under slider i'm going to turn the slider off and then let's have this over here so i've just formatted the slicers that i have over here added some background colors and made it a little more uh, nicer to look at so and then now you have custom and then you have default and as you can see here our default sales value is twenty one thousand. when i click on custom and uh, which is this particular value the sales value is 383000 however uh, the first instance when you look at it the dates here are not changing when i uh, when i choose custom or default so one thing that you will have to do here is go to the format tab and click on edit interactions since both of them are slicers they aren't interacting with each, with each other so you need to click on this visual over here and then click on this filter option over here. So the moment you do that, you will see that the date has now been filtered and then you can click on custom and then the dates are visible. You can choose any date you want from here. And then there is default option which you can choose from which will be defaulted to la the last seven days. However, when you click on custom and let's say you change a selection and when you come back to default, it does not go back to the default dates over here so the reason for not clearing the filter over here when i switch back to default it doesn't get back to the default date is because the slicer is still holding the custom values that we selected into its selection and it is not clearing that selection so what you can do is you can click on this particular visual over here which says clear selections and then we will get back to our normal date and then now we can select between custom and default however uh, it, it is difficult to tell the user that there is a clear selection button which they need to press on to clear the selections. What you can do is you can go to the insert tab, click on button and click on this particular reset button over here. Bring, bring this particular uh, button over here into the report and let's go back to view tab and click on bookmarks and you can add a new bookmark over here and clear selections and then call this as clear filter clear filter and then once the filter is cleared and then it selected on default you can come over here and click on update so when you do that you, there's a new bookmark created now you can go to this particular visual or the button that we've added go to the actions tab and click on bookmark under type and select the bookmark that we just added over here okay and then we are done let's close this and now let us go back to custom change date and now come back to default you see that it is not changing you can control and press this particular link to clear these filters or the selections that have been applied to this visual now you can see that we are now back to normal custom dates and then you can go back to custom and now come back to default the values will still remain so this is how you can create a uh, a slicer which will default to a certain values let's say today last week last month last year 
or anything for that matter and at the same time also allow the users to be able to choose the custom dates based on their requirements. So one thing that you will also notice here is that in the default selection over here all the previous dates have been grayed out. You cannot choose anything beyond or before 31st of August based on the default selection. However, when you click on custom, you will be able to see all the dates that are available in that particular data set. So that's it guys in this particular tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. You've learned something new today. Please consider subscribing to my channel for more such tutorials.